this, this is, it, it's a little controversy to this because it can be kind of rough on the gymnast, but it does speed up the round off a lot. Okay? If I have somebody tumbling backwards, I'm going to want their hands slightly turned in to straight, definitely not turned out. If I have somebody, somebody tumbling forwards, okay, I want their hands slightly turned out, okay, because it opens up their shoulders and it, and it frees up their wrists and they can push faster out of it. Well, what do we do with a round off? Okay, very often we tell the kids we want their hands to be in. So if I'm having somebody dig their second hand in, now this second elbow is bent. Right? From a 70-foot run, there's no way that's fast enough. Okay? I want them to block through their shoulder in their round up. Is everybody following me? So what I ask the kids to do is, as they hurdle, I want this first hand to come down a little bit quicker, okay? and I want the second hand to stay facing the vault, the, the vaulting board. Okay? So the second hand stays pointed out. I've only done this with my higher level gymnasts, okay, that were strong. Yep, pretty much like that, okay. So the first hand cheats down a little bit to speed the turnover up, and the second hand, I'm asking them to make it point towards the vault table. Reality is, it's not, it, 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 it's in a little bit, but what I'm not getting anymore is this bent elbow that I'm getting through with our kids so they're not standing at the end of the vault runway talking for 45 minutes, okay. And so these, I usually pick two or three drills every day, okay? And we work a different part, okay? We'll work, we'll do a round off drill, we'll do a back handspring drill, and I'll do a landing drill. Every day, the, our, our developmental kids are level fours and our level fives, and most of our sixes actually can flip your chain though. Um, our level fours and our level fives, they'll each do one of those drills on the way back. And it just helps me spread the group out so they're not all, so I don't have, you know, 10 kids, I have 12 kids in a group. So I don't have one kid vaulting, one kid walking back, and 10 kids standing back there talking. Okay, that kind of irritates me. It doesn't irritate anybody else, I'm sure. You know, it's a tennis ball, it's not a baseball. You know, I thought about that. Hockey puck, maybe. Um, no, the tennis ball, it was just, uh, we, we were doing push ups <clears throat> on the tennis balls. Okay. Um, ju just for a stabilization thing, and the kids were driving me crazy. And, and so I had one in my hand, I was just bouncing it, I was getting really aggravated, and I threw it, and I meant to hit the wall, and I pegged the kid right in the side. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel bad. You know, you know, when they're in their first year of optionals, she's going to land her layout full on floor really crappy, and it's going to hurt her ankle. And now we have to go to vault, and there's no way she can sue. It just hurts too much. And a handspring doesn't have a high enough start value, and that's going to hurt us. So what should I do? So we always have this handspring fall as a backup plan. So we do um, three things that I do for drills for handspring falls. Um, whose turn is it to demonstrate? So everybody has to look over here. Okay. And her head is still looking up at this hand. Okay. And on a ring, her body will spin. Does everybody understand how that works? So she'll go all the way around. Okay. Let's do it again. You know, so her, she'll be able to spin all the way around on the ring. Everybody got that? Okay, come down. So that's one drill we do. The other one we do. Hang by your knees. Um, hang by your knees. That was the most complicated way I've ever seen my <laughs> Just go, put your legs up there. <laughs> Understand that, so it's the same kind of thing. Right. And I'll try to okay. bring hand down one, one hand. Okay. okay, so they'll do handspring up the wedge, roll down. What I like about this is righty start on this side, lefty start on that side. And I just made you roll left, didn't I? Sorry, come down. Okay, turn your belly. So 
what I would do is I would set this up on the trampoline okay, or on our tumble track. Come back here and kneel down. Kneel. Okay. So here's your ending, here's your ending position in the back handspring. Okay? Now remember, they're not a good gymnast like Claire. Okay, we're talking little kids. So what I'm trying to do is get them to snap up and stand up as they push off the floor. So here is their ending position. Okay? Do you feel comfortable if you can slow down your back handspring enough where you can land on your knees without it hurting? Okay. Yeah. Okay? So I slowed it up. But you can picture how this would help a developmental kid snap up and get in this round shape that we're looking for. Okay? So we'll do back handsprings uphill. Okay? Whether we're going over a piece of trapezoid or up the wedge mat, we'll just keep doing these a lot. Um, oh, I, meant to, I, I meant to steal a couple of the bar, um, a couple of, of the um, wash pots that are in the restroom. Okay, I have a whole bunch of these, kind of, and I put tape on them. Okay, and now hold my fingers between your ears, not with your hands. <laughs> Good. Okay. So, you know, so we'll use wash pots like this. Okay. Um, Go, go to Walmart, get a whole bunch of washcloths, tape them up. You will, you will use them for everything. Every drill you have where you're tired of yelling at your kids to get their head in, okay, hold a washcloth, okay? That handspring full drill, she's got to hold it here, okay? Back handsprings, you're tired of them, you know, they, they've got to hold it here. Blind changes, okay, when they're swinging giants on bars, they have to hold that right there as they do their giants. They can hold it between their feet. They're, they're washcloths, they don't hurt, okay? Or they shouldn't. Sometimes they get kind of crusty, but we'll live with that. Good. Now that's your end goal. Your developmental kids are not going to do that. We all know that, okay? But you want them to start understanding how to get their arms back while their feet stay behind. Everybody understand? Okay. We talked a little bit about uh, this with the conditioning exercise that you did where I held on to your feet and reached back. Yeah. We can go off the edge here. Okay. Go arms back. And up. Okay. And the next thing I would have you do, now I want your hands, what are your hands pointing to? What do you say? Right. Can you keep your hands always pointing to that light? Very good. And back up. So her body's starting to figure out how to do a layup, okay? Um, going back to, now the first part of any layup, whether it's tumbling or on ball, actually moves forward slightly. So if you go back to the bar lecture, the flyaway drill that I did, where we went jump, gain it to your back, people remember that? We do that same drill. You still see that same spot? What? Nothing. Okay. Now her head has to do something. But if her head throws back, what way does her body go? Forwards. If we want her body to go forwards, if she throws her head back, her body's going to move forwards. Right? It's Newton's first law. Okay? So what we need to do is actually just tuck her chin in. If all she does, all she does is tuck her chin, not, not down, just in, like you're, like you're a soldier, okay? If all she does is tuck her chin in, she'll do this, okay? So everybody stand up, okay? okay. So what I want you to do, get a partner, this is my partner, okay? Hold on to your partner's hand, okay? Yeah. Look, look at me right in the eye, right? And if you just tuck your chin back, you your body hit back. Okay? So, all you want to feel yourself do, I'm going to do this yeah. She's looking at me like, am I And all they do is they tuck their chin in, they tip back, and they go 
flat to their back onto the eight inch mat. And you know, I can get four or five kids going at a time. So you have to teach that layout position. Okay? The next one. Okay? All right. So as you fall back, you're gonna tuck your chin in, tuck your chin in, but not down. And your hands always point to the same place. Do you understand? Okay, go ahead. Okay. And it's a back layout. Does everybody understand how we did that? Do it one more time. Okay. So your hands always point to the same place. Your chin tucks in. Your body just stays tight. All right. All right. So instead of my hand, it's the bungee. And we'll go ten times fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. And then she has to hold. Okay. Hold it down. Push, push down. There you go. Okay. So we're teaching that second leg to be fast and be tight. Right. By holding on to the bungee. We'll do a similar thing with her arms, okay? So now she just rolls over. Now she's holding on to the bungee this way, okay? And this is a drill for her to get her arms back set. So she'll pull back on the bungee 10 times really fast and then hold. Everybody understand that? Um, it's similar to the drill we did for meeting teams in, in that bar. Actually, somebody had asked me about that. So they pull back 10 times and, and they hold, okay? The other thing that we'll do I'll take the bungee and I will, it'll be on the stall bar, about first shoulder height, okay? And I'll put it on her back leg. Do your, do your back leg, okay? So do a needle scale and stand up hard, okay? So you stand up hard, needle scale and stand up, okay? So the bungee is working both directions. It's working as she kicks her leg because as it gets to here, it's resisting and it's resisting on the way back down. Okay, can everybody visualize that? Yeah. They can probably, and then have to do a back handspring right away. Go back handspring. Yeah. Okay, don't step up. Okay. So resist against me. Push your hands back fast. Fast, fast. One, two, three, four, five. No back handspring fast. Okay. So it's, they have to pull back ten times really fast, and then they back handspring over. You know, and then you start combining stations, all right? Um, I, I like that they're, they're doing an exercise, okay, and then they have to use that specific exercise in a skill, all right? Any questions on that? How am I doing for time? 20 minutes. Oh, cool. All right. Um, listen, everybody kind of, you're going to walk me through. That was terrific. That's all right. Okay. Do it again. That's okay. So, you know, we just need to make adjustments here. Okay. You know those, the, the rainbow maps that sometimes Velcro together as well? Okay. I'll take those and I'll set those up here. Okay. So I know that their hands stay in close together because I have kids that sometimes will do this in their back handspring. They'll throw their arms out. Well, if they throw their arms out and both arms get caught on a mat and they land on their head, they learn pretty quick not to do that. So we'll keep them, we'll keep their hands in. I want that second leg to be a lot faster in your round up. Turn that second leg over. Good. Isn't that, that's terrific. Okay, so when we, come here. So now when we find her steps, now with her chin tucked back, hands come down. Can you picture how this whole thing comes together? 